laws of chemical combination. Well, we know that there are five laws of chemical combination. The first law is law of conservation of mass. It states that mass is neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. For example, consider a general chemical reaction. A plus B react together to form C plus D. Now according to the law of conservation of mass, the mass of reactants A plus B is equal to the mass of reactants C plus D. I mean, if the mass of reactants is 200 grams, then the mass of products would also be 200 grams. To learn this concept further, let's consider this numerical problem. 4 gram of hydrogen react with some oxygen gas to make 36 gram of water. Find the total mass of oxygen used in this chemical reaction. Well, I write the given data. 4 gram of hydrogen is used, 36 gram of water is formed. We are asked to find the total mass of oxygen used. Let x mass of oxygen is used with 4 gram of hydrogen to form 36 gram of water. Now according to the law of conservation of mass, the sum of masses of reactants is equal to the sum of masses of the products. There are two reactants, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. I add their respective masses. 4 gram plus x gram is equal to the mass of products which is 36 gram. After calculation, I get 32 gram. Thus 32 gram of oxygen is used in this reaction. Hence we see that the law of conservation of mass is conserved in this chemical reaction. Because 36 gram of reactants react together to form 36 gram of products. Remember that this law of conservation of mass is not 100% valid because according to E is equal to mc squared, some mass of the reactants converts to energy. Hence law of conservation of mass states that mass is neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. Rather, it remains constant. Now the second law is law of definite proportion. It states that elements in a compound is always present and a fixed ratio by mass. For example, consider tea and cold drink. We know that they both contain water H2O. The law of definite proportion states that the ratio of mass of hydrogen to the ratio of mass of oxygen and the T is 2 gram to 16 gram are 1 gram to 8 gram. While in the cold drink, the ratio of mass of hydrogen to the ratio of mass of oxygen is also 2 gram to 16 gram or 1 gram to 8 gram. It means that the ratio of mass of elements remains the same everywhere in any compound. Secondly, consider this example. If you buy simple sugar like glucose in USA, India or Canada, still the ratio of mass is carbon to hydrogen, hydrogen to oxygen is 72 gram to 12 gram to 96 gram. Thirdly, let me ask you one important question. What if we add or remove one element or one molar mass to a compound? The answer is simple. We get a new compound. For example, the chemical formula of water is H2O. The ratio of masses of hydrogen to oxygen is 2 gram to 16 gram. Now if we add one extra oxygen to it, we get H2O2. This is not water, rather this is hydrogen peroxide. I mean, this is a new compound. In this compound, the ratio of mass of hydrogen to the ratio of mass of oxygen is 2 gram to 32 gram. So ratio of masses remain the same in a compound. Now consider this numerical problem. A pure simple of water contains 14 grams of hydrogen. How many grams of oxygen are present in the sample? Well, we know that the chemical formula of water is H2O. The ratio of masses of hydrogen to oxygen is 2 gram to 16 gram or 1 gram to 8 gram. Now in the question, 14 gram of hydrogen will react with X gram of oxygen. 
To do this calculation, the simple method is to cross multiply them. I get 1n to x is equal to 8n to 14. After calculation, I get x is equal to 112 gram. Thus, 14 gram of hydrogen will react with 112 gram of oxygen to form H2O. Still, the ratio of masses of hydrogen to oxygen is 1 gram to 8 gram. Thus, remember that elements in a compound are always present in a fixed tissue by mass. Now, the third law is law of multiple proportion. Believe me, many talented people cannot understand its concept and depth. But don't worry, you will master it. Firstly, I always ask this important question from my student. What this law of multiple proportion is about? Well, the law is about how two different elements form different compounds. Let me repeat it. This law is about how two different elements form different compounds. For example, consider hydrogen element and oxygen element. We know that they can form two different compounds like water H2O and hydrogen peroxide H2O2. Now, this law explains the combination of these two elements hydrogen and oxygen to form water and hydrogen peroxide. Hence, note it down this important question which many students are not understanding. Now, the law of multiple proportion states that if two elements combine to form more than one compound, the ratio of the masses of the second element is a small whole number of fixed amount of the first element. It seems pretty difficult definition. But don't worry. Consider this example. Carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. We know that they both are made up of two elements, carbon and oxygen. I take the ratio of masses of carbon to oxygen and carbon to oxygen. Now carbon is the first element and oxygen is the second element. We know that in carbon monoxide, the ratio of carbon to oxygen is 12 gram to 16 gram, while in carbon dioxide, the ratio of masses carbon to oxygen is 12 gram to 32 gram. Now I cut the first element carbon. Because in the both compounds, the mass of the carbon is 12 gram and it is the first element. Now I find the ratio of masses of the second element oxygen in both the compounds. Let me repeat it. I find the ratio of masses of the second element oxygen in both the compounds. The ratio of mass of oxygen in the first compound to the ratio of mass of oxygen in the second compound. We can see that in the first compound, the mass of oxygen is 16 gram and in the second compound, the mass of oxygen is 32 gram. We get 1 ratio to 2. We know that 1 and 2 are both whole numbers. Therefore, the law of multiple proportion states that if two elements like carbon and oxygen form different compounds like carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, the ratio of the masses of the second element like oxygen is a small whole number like 1 and 2. Remember that this ratio 1 and 2 means that oxygen is two times more in carbon dioxide then in carbon monoxide. Now to learn this concept further, consider this second example. We can see that hydrogen and oxygen form two different compounds, water and hydrogen peroxide. In the water, the ratio of masses of hydrogen to oxygen is 2 gram to 16 gram, while in hydrogen peroxide, the ratio of masses of hydrogen to oxygen is 2 gram to 32 gram. Now I cut the masses of first element, hydrogen, because it is fixed and we can see that it is 2 gram and 2 gram. I am interested to find the ratio of masses of the second element, which is oxygen. We can see that it is 1 ratio to 2. Hence the ratio of masses of the second element is again whole number, 1 to 2. Thirdly, consider this example. Now pause the video. 
and try to find the ratio of masses of the second element. Well, the ratio of masses of nitrogen to oxygen is 22 to 16, 14 to 16 and 28 to 48. Now I have to multiply the ratio of 14 to 16 in order to fix the mass of first element. I get 28 ratio to 16, 28 ratio to 32 and 28 ratio to 48. Here I cut the masses of nitrogen, our first element, because it is fixed. Now I find the ratio of masses of the second element, 1 ratio to 2, 2 ratio to 3. Hence the ratio of the second element is again small whole numbers. Therefore, law of multiple proportions states that the ratio of the masses of the second element is a small whole number of a fixed amount of the first element and different compounds. Now the fourth law is Gay-Lussac's law of combining volumes. Remember that this law is only valid for gases. It states that when gases react together to form gaseous products, the volumes of reactants and product bear a small whole number at constant volume, pressure and temperature. For example, consider this reaction. Carbon plus oxygen gas react together to form carbon dioxide gas. According to the Gay-Lussac's law, the coefficient of reactants and product represents volume. I mean, the coefficient of carbon is 1, that of oxygen is 1 and that of carbon dioxide is 1. Hence, we say that 1 volume of carbon react with 1 volume of oxygen to form 1 volume of carbon dioxide gas. Or we say that 100 ml of carbon react with 100 ml of oxygen gas to form 100 ml of carbon dioxide gas. If we find the ratio of reactants to the products, it is 1 ratio 1 to 1 ratio 1. Secondly, consider this reaction. We already know that coefficient of reactants and product represents volume. According to Gay-Lussac's law, two volume of hydrogen gas react with one volume of oxygen gas to form two volume of water. Now the ratio of reactants to product is 2 to 1 to 2. Now 50 ml of hydrogen gas react with 25 ml of oxygen because the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is 2 to 1 and it will produce 50 ml of water vapor. To learn this concept further, consider this numerical problem. What volume of steam is formed when 20 cm cube of hydrogen and 30 cm cube of oxygen mix together? What gases is in excess and by what amount? Well, according to the given reactant, two volume of hydrogen gas react with one volume of oxygen gas to produce two volume of water vapors. The ratio of hydrogen gas to oxygen gas is 2 to 1 and that to the product is 2. Now 20 cm cube of hydrogen gas will react with 10 cm cube of oxygen gas because the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen gas is 2 to 1 and it will produce 20 cm cube water vapors. Hence 20 cm cube of steam is produced. Secondly, according to the ratio, we need only 10 cm cube of oxygen gas to react with 20 cm cube of hydrogen gas. But in the question, there is 30 cm cube of oxygen gas taken. I minus 30 cm cube minus 10 cm cube. I get 20 cm cube. Hence 20 cm cube oxygen is in excess. Just remember that Gay-Lussac's law is all about volumes of reactants and products. Finally, the fifth law is Avogadro's law. Remember that this law is only valid for gases. Under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, equal volumes of different gases contain an equal number of molecules. For example, consider this closed container. Let this container contain oxygen gas and its volume is 1000 cm cube. Let this container contains hydrogen gas and its volume is also 1000 cm cube. Now I keep this closed container at 400 Kelvin and at 1 Tor. If I calculate the number of molecules in these two containers, I would get the same number of molecules 
and these two containers having different gases. Let's suppose this container will have 12 into 10 to the power 23 molecules of oxygen gas and this container will have also 12 into 10 to the power 23 molecules of hydrogen gas. Secondly, if I add methane gas to this container and carbon dioxide gas to this container, again these both containers having different gases will have the same number of molecules. Just remember that Avogadro's law is all about if temperature and pressure is constant, equal volumes of different gases contain an equal number of gases. This was all about laws of chemical combinations.